Hey, what is up, the wonderful world of YouTube? I just wanted to come to you today because a guy asked me the other day, you know, which do I like, spinning reels or conventional or bait casters? So I thought I'd put my thoughts right here on video so everybody can hear me and everybody can um, get my opinion. I'm no expert, but this is just my thoughts on it. And uh, here we go. All right, first point, okay? If I'm running topwater baits, or I'm running uh, uh, twitch baits, or jerk baits, or something that takes a lot of wrist action, I like to use a spinning reel, okay? Um, it works better for me, I can control the bait better, I can control the hook set, and it works well for me. Um, if I'm offshore BTB, I like to use these, okay? Because there's a lot of wind, um, also, there's a lot of waves, and when you go to you know cast, you know you don't have to worry about back you know backlashing or um, getting a, a bird's nest or whatever because you're not having to worry about hitting the water or something behind you um, when you're fishing. Um, uh, it just you know just just my opinion, BTB. I like using these when I'm casting baits, you know, uh, artificials and stuff. All right, for those of you out there that don't exactly know what a spinning and a conventional and a uh, uh, bait caster is, um, here, here, here they are. You know, you might have found this video and, and you're trying to figure out which reel to get first or next. And uh, so here's a spinning reel. Boom, right here. This is my uh, pen slammer. I don't even know if they make these anymore. I think they just make the spin fishers, but I've had this thing for like 10 years. This is my slammer. Um, on a six foot ugly stick um, yeah it's a short rod but it's maneuverable and it's easy and I've had it for a long time and it, it works so um, this is a spinning reel here is a bait caster and uh, this is my Revo SX uh, spin, uh, bait caster uh, I think it's got a 20 pound drag 30 pound braid I got on here and uh, six and a half six and a half foot uh, ugly stick GSX rod um, so um, and then here's a conventional alright this is my Jigmaster 500 on a Tiger uh, Tiger light rod it's one of my uh, Beyond the Breakers uh, BTB re reels uh, big loud clicker uh, it's in a lot of my other videos a lot of my you know a lot of the videos you've seen I'm using this reel and uh, okay so here's my thoughts on when where why and should you use these if I need something with a lot of crank speed I'm gonna go to my uh, my Revo here my bait caster because I mean this has got a really fast uh, retrieve ratio you can really get it into the belly when you get that that hook set and probably the most important reason why I like using bait casters is that uh, they're really sensitive okay so so I when I when I'm working the the bait with the rod tip okay I can got, have my thumb on the braid so I can feel the vibrations of the braid okay and also if you look back here I can have my fingers on the graphite itself so if I'm working that bottom jig okay and I'm working it real slow I can feel it hit every rock. I can feel it get into something soft, like a soft bottom, because this braid is really sensitive. That's why I like using braid. And it's got zero stretch, so you know as soon as you pop up on him, you got him. Now, um, you can feel it hit, bounce on the pilings. You can feel it, you know, when it finally gets to the bottom. You know, with a bait caster, you can, you can feel, you know, every little twitch with it. And uh, it just works really well, you know. And when you're swimming those baits, um, you got a good cranking action, a lot of horsepower on these these Revos to um, to really get uh, get a good feel on the fish. These things are killing me, anyways. Um, but but basically, what I do is I have I'll take two spinning reels, two bait casters, bottom jigs, heavy heavy baits, swim baits right here on the on the bait casters, top water. Twitch baits, light stuff on the spin spin casters, uh, spinning reels, and uh, that's the way I work them. You know, you could do perfectly fine with having four spinning reels. You know, but having four bait casters, you're gonna have a hard time throwing light baits, especially with the wind. Um, you know, 
there's not any wind, bait casters are awesome. If there's a lot of wind, they can be a pain in the butt. So just think about that when you're uh, trying to decide on what you want to get, okay? Now, the reason why I like using a, a conventional reel, you know, these are just straight dropping, you know, dropping or a slow flip off the back of the kayak. You know, so like one of the awesome things about these is they got a really loud clicker. Um, they hold a ton of line. You're not getting spooled with these bad boys. You know, if you need a little more uh, horsepower on the drag, damn. Sorry, these mosquitoes are absolutely driving me nuts while I'm trying to film this. But anyways, you got a little extra thumb power here. You know, when you're really trying to horse it up, you can put your thumb on it. Um, you know, you know. You can put straight mono, you can just put straight braid, whatever. Um, these got a super loud clicker. Check it out, hold on. Oh. Like that, see that? Like there is no mistaking when this bad boy goes off. You know, it's been in a few of my other videos. You can see it in all my, uh, most of my fishing videos where I'm BTB. This is my BTB reel. That and my uh, pin fisher, uh, or my, my pin um, 850. Spin Fisher, um, loaded with 50 count, 50 uh, pound casking braided line, half spooled. Um, but uh, biting a big fish, um, you can thumb it when you need extra extra drag power. Okay, you can thumb spool it here. Okay, when you need to slow it down, because I wear gloves, so you can you can slow them down by putting you know a little thumb pressure on the line, and you can uh, you can when you really gotta you know dig in and pull and the drag slipping you can hold on to it here um, now the other trick with it with a with a conventional uh, besides the loud clicker is see how the eyes it's like the reels on the top of the rod and so are the eyes okay now what you can do all right I pulled out one of my yaks so I can show this to you I'm sitting on the ground but maybe you'll get the gist of this okay so check it out because I'm a, I'm a lazy dude fighting big fish, this is the trick I figured out a long ways. You got a, you got a boat with a 400 pound capacity, right? And you're using braided line, which is basically like tow rope, right? Okay, so he's just going to pull you around. So use some leverage on him. Instead of holding the, the reel up the entire time, okay, let the kayak do the work. Watch. All right, here's the demonstration, okay? Tarpon's out there. Big fish is out there, okay? Like where I'm pointing out here, imagine the, the little barrel over there is the fish. And he's down deep, okay? So I'm going to reel in, and I'm going to be turning the reel handle, and I'm going to be taking in line, okay? Basically pulling the kayak towards the fish, and I'm setting the reel and the rod back down on the, the kayak itself, okay? That way he's fighting the buoyancy of the, of the boat, okay? And then when I feel him slow down again, I'm going to pick up. I'm going to take in line, take in line, take in line, take in line, and sit it right back on the edge of the kayak. Now that way he is fighting the buoyancy of the kayak and not fighting me. I'm not sitting here all bowed up with my bicep ready to explode. I guarantee you that he wears out before you do, all right? Or, you know, your leader might wear out faster, but, you know, you got, you got a lot better chance, especially if you're not a big, strong dude, you know, if you're a smaller person. Fighting a fish like that is a lot easier. All right, I hope I hope that makes sense. Okay, I'm out here fighting the mosquitoes trying to do this video, and they're eating me alive. All right, but uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm just reeling in, reeling in the slack, putting it back down on the kayak, and letting him fight the buoyancy of the kayak. And then he's pulling me around. And after a while, you know, it's going to be like that Jaws movie where he's pulling the buoys around the entire time, and he just gets wore out. Because basically, a 55, 50 pound braid or 65 pound braid. They are not going to break. He's just going to pull you around. It's like having a tow rope out there. Okay? So you just pick it up, put it back on the side of the kayak, and let him fight the buoyancy. Now here's my other uh, BTB rod. This is the big bad boy that caught that tarpon that is on um, one of my videos. It's this Pen 850 with a um, six and a half foot ugly stick. Okay? It's got the Tiger Light rod. Now um, this thing, offshore BTB will handle anything pretty much um, spinning reel is very versatile you know if I gotta throw to like big baits to a tarpon you know like big swim baits I'm gonna use a big spinning reel because you can't use one of these little um, bait casters or spinning reels for throwing a bait to a tarpon because you'll break your junk off alright now um, 
this one you can cast a little bit you know I need a little longer rod this one's kind of short for that but gets the job done um, you know if I was gonna pick two reels to go BTB it'd be a you know starting out not you know going through all the rigmarole I'd buy a, a, a 4,000 or a 3,000 series spinning reel and then something like a 750 or an 850 um, for trolling and you'd be set you know you just be set but um, I like if I'm going out particularly for a big fight it's gonna be with the big conventional because uh, more line capacity but to, to shore things up okay um, or in summation um, really what I'm trying to say is okay um, if you're looking for a, a, you know switching to get a bait caster or you're new to the sport uh, a spinning reel is just way more versatile way more adaptable especially for somebody that um, is just getting into the sport or even has been in the sport a long time you can use a spin, spinning reel for anything now um, once you get the feel for a bait caster, it does have its pluses, you know. Like I said, you know, you can feel the bottom, you know, you, more cranking power. Um, they're, they're a little more compact and, you know, you can, you know, really feel what the fish is doing. Um, and you can cast them a little further sometimes, cast them a country mile, but you do have to deal with backlashes. And, you know, on the backswing, sometimes you hit stuff, especially in a kayak because you're so low to the water. I'm usually rocking 20, 25 pound braid on my spin casters because I do a lot of bull red fishing and offshore work. And then I'll be rocking 30 pound braid on my on my bait casters because it, it fits the spool real well and I don't have to worry about it digging into itself. And then offshore work, I've got the uh, Pen 850 and the Jigmaster 500 spooled up with you know about 300 yards of, uh, of line and uh, half spooled with the cast king braided 50 pound line and it just does work on everything you know work your rudder on your kayak and there's nothing getting away from you you're not getting broke off you might get cut off but you won't get broke off but uh if you got any questions shoot them to me uh don't forget to follow me on yak molly on instagram yak molly on facebook and i'll see you next time